People living in one town are not only practicing what they preach on Sundays, but they're also showing it. And where just might surprise you. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell has the story new at 10. You sit on dollar bills, Bible quotes, and now a piece of government property. But John Q. Taxpayer didn't have to fork over one cent. Nested in the heart of Southeast Tennessee is the town of Winchester, known for Donna Shore, an American singer and beloved actress. But now this small town is known for this, In God We Trust. Oh, it's awesome. It's engraved on the old courthouse in Winchester. The county commissioners met and approved it, but the county needed to raise money to pay for it. So they took to a local radio station. And what happened next? They say it was a miracle. When I heard it, the good Lord just touched me and uh, I knew what I had to do and, and I just felt like I wanted to pay for that. Tommy paid everything and the taxpayers in Franklin County never paid one cent. It was all done by a private citizen. Mary Sons, who is the commission secretary, thinks other counties will follow in their footsteps. I sure hope so, you know, and sometimes it just takes one county to step forward first, you know, to set the example, to follow through. And one man that's lived in the town for more than six decades says it's been a long time coming. If Christians don't stand up and start fighting for theirs, just like everybody else is fighting for, for theirs, you know, we might need to throw a few rocks too. And if you ask Mike if he's worried about backlash, his answer is pretty simple. You know what, I don't care if they backlash or not. I stand up for what's right. Nobody's gonna tell me no different. I do the right thing and that's something I did. If people got a problem with it, then they'll have to answer for it later, not me. Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. Working for you. This is Channel 4 News at 10. He stepped up to serve his country, and now those who appreciate that service are stepping up to serve him. Good evening, and thanks for joining us after Sunday Night Football. I'm Dennis Ferrier. Allen has the night off. Tonight we begin with the story of an unclaimed body that has become the story of a funeral with honors. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell has the rest of the story. Our military is the heart of this country. They protect us and keep us safe. So when a veteran dies with little or no family, what should we do? One funeral home answered that question. As cars pass by Dixon Funeral Home, they noticed a lot of flags. You would assume someone had died and his family and friends are paying their respect. But these flags are from strangers, strangers who care. Mr. Ronnie Lee Toller, who departed this life August the 25th, the funeral home searched for his family and found his mother, but she has dementia, and a brother in bad health as well. So with no one claiming the body, Dixon Funeral Home owner Chris Mayberry stepped in. When we found out that this gentleman was unclaimed and a veteran and, and had no one to, to step in, we were definitely willing to do so. And condolences for Mr. Toller has been coming in from all across the country. We've had now about 58,000 uh, hits now on our, our Facebook page for, for the funeral home and, and just the, the outpouring of love and support has just overwhelmed us at times with people calling, people uh, sending us messages. And Lois, the manager of the funeral home, tells us a seven-year-old girl came by to deliver this. And what she told the staff filled their eyes with tears. And she said, I drew this for Mr. Toller and I want to put it near his casket. So it is there. It's at the head of his casket. And this man rode his motorcycle all the way from St. Louis so he could attend Mr. Toller's funeral. I've been to some of these before in St. Louis area where people don't have family showing up and we get the Patriot Guards good. And uh, what this uh, funeral home is doing, Dixon Funeral Home, is unbelievable. He feels tomorrow's funeral will be amazing. Yeah, I'm thinking you're going to have a big turnout tomorrow. That's what I'm hoping for. So everybody come on out. Funeral service will be tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the Middle Tennessee Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Pegram. I'm Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. Since we posted this story to our WSMV Facebook page, your comments and condolences have been pouring in. Stephanie Ralph commented, quote, This veteran is America's veteran. As a veteran, you, sir, deserve the honors, the recognition, the love for all of America. While you are now laid to rest, your watch duty is over and God, God called upon you to be his warrior in heaven. Meanwhile, Kathy is thankful for the funeral home. She said, quote, this is so sad. Thanks to the kind people at the funeral home for giving this veteran honor. If you'd like to share your thoughts and condolences, you can leave your thoughts on our WSMV Facebook page and we'll try to get them on the air. 
working for you. This is Channel 4 News at 10. I was in utter shock. I mean, I was, I actually started to tear up. Emotions are running pretty high over a corner market in a Brentwood neighborhood right now. The owner has been told he has weeks to pack up and leave. Good evening and welcome to Channel 4 News at 10. So why are residents so passionate about the change that it even moved country star Verlin Thompson to write a song about it? Well, folks here say it's like a family member who has been told to leave. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell picks up the story. One beloved market is in jeopardy of closing, but the community is in full force to make sure that this fixture stays open. Cars making their way down Granny White Pike. Music is heard from a strange location. These folks are in support of Dan, who has been running the Granny White Market for 19 years. I remember when you were a little baby. Of course. But he received a disturbing phone call that shocked everyone in the community. As of Tuesday, my landlord called and said, uh, close the doors and be out by October 1. As the word quickly spread, <laughs> folks came out to help. I've known him for 19 years, my children, have been coming here since they were little. He's part of my life, part of the community, and just want to do whatever I can to help. And Dan is just not a small business owner. He has a heart for the community and people. When you're sick, he brings you soup. That's true. It's, he's irreplaceable. Mary, who is a supporter of Dan, will tell you actions speak louder than words. That in less than 72 hours or so, over 6,000 people have signed a petition, and there's been hordes of people here, and many will come today. The community outpouring is just, it's, it's telling. I think Dan is part of the fabric of Nashville and of this area of Granny White Pike. For 19 years, I've tried to be of service to everybody. We change tires. We take old ladies home when they get lost. We, we find lost dogs. With a heart of gold and an army on the front line, Dan is keeping his faith that something positive will happen. We're praying. Just by the grace of God. Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. The community, of course, hoping that uh, this rally today will have an influence on the owner's decision. And remember to stay with WSMV for updates on the story. She is a legend. She is often referred to as Nashville's queen of the blues. Marion James is a major part of the fabric that makes up Music City. She is credited with giving this guy here, rock legend Jimi Hendrix, a start when he lived here in Nashville. At the time, Hendrix was a down-on-his-luck musician renting a room on the second floor of a beauty salon on Jefferson Street. Now James wants to turn that history into not only a revival of Jefferson Street, but also as a way to help other musicians as well. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell with the story. Folks strolling down Printer's Alley got a little more than country music. They got a history lesson of blues from the queen herself. Printer's Alley was the home of the blues today. David Flynn, the director of the Musicians Reunion, says it's about helping musicians in need. Marion James, Nashville's Queen of the Blues, started this, and the money is a benefit to, to help uh, musicians. So musicians uh, sick. This is the 32nd annual reunion benefit. Marion James has helped folks like Jimi Hendrix. He played in a band for me. One story she recalls about Jimi, they almost missed their gig. They were to perform in Tullahoma. I goes upstairs, not going to know there he is. And don't have on those shirts sitting on the side of the bed playing his guitar. And she had to ask him. I said, Jimmy, are you going to the gig? Yeah, I'll be ready in a few minutes. And he was more interested in that guitar he was playing instead of getting up going to the gig. And her focus now is on Jefferson Street by honoring the greatest instrumentalist of rock music. We are trying to get enough money to have a statue made of Jimi Hendrix put on Jefferson Street because Jefferson Street has a lot of history and I'm trying to get it through to everyone. If we work together, we'll be successful. In Nashville, Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News.
Great lady, a big part of music history. And if you'd like to help with the Jimi Hendrix statue, contact Citizens Bank at 21st and Jefferson. It's called the Jimi Hendrix Project, and any amount donated will be greatly appreciated. They are often called the greatest generation, a generation who struggled through deep depression in the 1930s, and then they were called up to fight for democracy during World War II. More than 300,000 Tennesseans answered that call to keep the world from entering a new dark age against the Axis powers. Today, the state paused to honor them. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell with a story. Nashville took time out today to say thank you and honor one of the most significant events of the 20th century. 70 years ago, the Japanese surrendered, ending World War II. We celebrate it as VJ Day. Today, Davidson County veterans honored men and women of that era. We're here to commemorate the end of World War II. Dorothy never went overseas, but she thinks people should know more about the war. Because of the types of battles that these people were, were uh, fighting, uh, we had two theaters of operation, as you know, the European and the Far Eastern operations. These were just kids that were doing this, and we should be forever grateful to them. At that time, America was different and can use a dose of what these men and women did to get the country back on track. Everybody was involved, everybody wanted to do something, and in their own way they did, whether you stayed at home, worked in a factory, or whether you actually went into the military, everybody joined in, we worked together. She did clerical work stateside, but she had dreams of going overseas, so they sent her to Grenier Field for training. What happened next, she didn't expect. Uh, they put me on a job there, waiting for the shipment to get together, which was an all-volunteer women's unit. And uh, when it came time to go, they told me they didn't have anyone to replace me in the job I was doing, so I had to stay. <laughs> this 92-year-old veteran understands the pressure women face in the military. I am so proud of the girls today that are in there and what they're doing. We were kind of the pioneers when I went in. We had to set the standard so these girls could follow us. Dorothy never wants us to forget the ones who gave it all. I wish that there was more appreciation of our veterans. In Nashville, Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. If you are from Coffee County, it's one of the biggest nights of the year, the coffee pot rivalry between Manchester and Tullahoma. But this morning, someone did something that goes way beyond poor sportsmanship. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell has the story. It's football time in Tennessee, but for one county that has been slugging it out with its next door opponent for over 90 years, the fun for some might be behind a jail cell. As Tullahoma Band prepares for tonight's football game, the 90 year old rivalry unfolds. Manchester and Tullahoma see who would take home the coffee pot. But Thursday night, this good, clean fun was corroded by vandals. Where we've had thousands of dollars worth of damage accomplished by some folks who don't represent the best of Manchester or the best of Tullahoma, but folks who are exceptional and disappointing and need to grow up. Superintendent of school Dan Lawson tells me this isn't the first time. Last year, someone put a dead bobcat on the field. But it is unfortunate that it seems to happen from year to year. Kim McGahey used this field for exercise. She hopes something will be done. One of the most important things is to, to teach students that being an upstanding citizen and, and having good character qualities is more important than, than a football game. Kim has this message for the person or persons who did this. Uh, high school's fun, but um, their, their actions have a lasting effect on others and just rethink the extent to which you go for rivalries. Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. Tonight, a new twist in the fight to keep a neighborhood market under the same management. The landlord claims the man running the Granny White Market has been late on his rent and has not lived up to his lease. But now the man on the ropes is turning the table saying he's the one who's owed tens of thousands of dollars. Channel 4's Jason Maxwell has the latest. Folks are rallying around Granny White Market in support of Dan Smith, who has only been given a few weeks to pack up and close shop. For 19 years, I've tried to 
be of service to everybody. We change tires. We take old ladies home when they get lost. We, we find lost dogs. Now Dan is officially fighting back. He's filed this lawsuit that says the landlord improperly collected money Dan should have never paid. For years, it says, the defendant charged and collected more than $50,000 in property taxes and insurance from the plaintiff in violation of the lease during the periods of 2001 to 2015. Looks to us like Mr. Smith and his company owe Dan money. Dan Smith is a fixture in the community in keeping Granny White Market a simple place, and that's Dan's mission. We've asked for an injunction okay. so that Dan can stay there. I mean, Dan's got no place to go. That's the only business in Forest Hills. There's, he can't set up shop down the street. He can't go anywhere else. The community supports Dan. And now the lawsuit may well decide the faith of Granny White Market and one man's version of the American dream. He's put everything he has into it. I mean, that's what he does. Seven days a week, that's what Dan Smith is, and that's what Dan Smith does, and he provides a great service to the community. We reached out to the owner of the building, who is also named Smith. Reese Smith didn't want to go on camera, but told us this, quote, we have received or reviewing the contents of the lawsuit. We look forward to settling this in court. We hate that it got to this point. There's always two sides to every story. I'm Jason Maxwell, Channel 4 News. With church service attendance on the decline, there's one pastor who's looking to change that. Come on, Shevel, we need to wake up. With cars streaming in this makeshift church lot, some people are wondering what's going on. That sound fills the Shevelville Park. And